Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, which today is episode 2 of 2 in my European Space Agency's Columbus Space Station concept recreation. In episode 1 I assembled this space station over 3 launches using the ESA Ariane 5 launch vehicle and today I'll be sending crew up to it. And I'll be sending them up in another ESA project that never happened, the Hermes space plane. The Hermes was a small space plane proposed in the mid 1970s initially to be launched on the yet to be developed Ariane 5 rocket giving Europe an independent way of launching humans into space. Yes despite the fact that the Ariane 5 has had a long and successful career of being ESA's biggest and most capable launch vehicle it's never actually been able to fulfill its primary mission which is to launch humans to orbit on board the Hermes space plane. At least it'll get to do it in my KSP recreation. I think that one of the most interesting aspects of the Hermes space plane is the adapter that attaches it to the Ariane 5 itself. This wasn't just a big dumb fuel tank or fuselage, but rather this was an airtight payload bay and airlock that would expand the internal capacity of the space plane and would serve as the means of docking it to the Columbus module. Prior to re-entry it would be sealed off and then decoupled from the rest of the spacecraft, leaving just the space plane itself to glide back to land for a horizontal landing, a bit like the space shuttle. Now while this was a clever idea, this did reduce the reusability of the shuttle and increased the cost of the program. And it was this cost as well as ESA's general lack of experience in space technology compared with the United States and Soviet Union, as well as our old friend politics that led to the demise of the Hermes space plane. In a way though, the entire program was fairly successful overall. The Ariane 5 was built and is still in service today, and while the Columbus space station wasn't built, it did end up becoming the Columbus module on the International Space Station. So I'd say ESA definitely scored 2 out of 3 there, or maybe one and a half out of three. Definitely more than zero anyway. And here I am building the Ariane 5 that's going to launch the space plane into space. The space plane itself was fairly difficult to recreate. It's that kind of awkward size where it's hard to recreate using stock KSP parts. So I kind of janked the cockpit by melding two of those Mark 1 cockpits together and then sticking a few Mark 2 crew cabins in the back. But I think Generally, overall, it looks fairly close to the actual appearance of the ESA space plane. At least, again, with the caveat that this was done using stock components. It would be nice to have a few more options regarding space plane cockpits, because we've really only got, like, four, haven't we? And options for space plane cockpits. But I guess, you know, there are mods that do give you lots of options, and I'm just stubborn and try and do everything stock, just so that, you know, newer players who aren't familiar with mods, and indeed console players, I salute you by by the way, for the patience that you must possess, uh, can relate a bit more to these videos. And of course, you can download the craft file from the description and you know it will work. You won't have any mod incompatibilities because it's not a modded craft. I think it does it use, I don't think I use any DLC parts. Anyway, here we are launching the rocket. Um, I will say this was definitely one of the most difficult rockets I've ever flown in this game. You might have noticed that I clipped some big S Elevon pieces into the Ariane 5's bottom most fuel tank just to try and give some level of stability to the craft. Not sure how big of a difference these actually made though as the craft is still incredibly tip happy. My advice to prevent this from flipping over if you were to try out the craft file yourself would be to make as few keyboard inputs as possible. Basically just lightly tap the pitch keys to initiate initiate the gravity turn and then just use auto SAS to maintain prograde and then just make minimal inputs and adjustments to the pitch and throttle as you ascend. I don't really have much more to add than that really, just a, just good luck I guess. Uh, it will it will definitely tip over. I wanted to fly this so it belly flops on its back, no I said that wrong. I wanted to launch this like the space shuttle would fly where the orbiter kind of ends up fall, rolling on its back as it ascends rather than doing this where it goes on its front. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Basically, I'd want this to be so the space plane would be upside down at this point rather than this way up, but that was just a non-starter. It would just always flip over. I couldn't get anywhere. I could get some level of success by flying it in this manner, though. So if you're having any problems, try... Just just keep trying, I guess, would be my advice. Just keep trying. Have some whisk... Have some apple juice to keep you uh, motivated, and you, you'll get there in the end with the power... with the power of friendship. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's like great tutorial, isn't it? Like most KSP tutorial guys. This is not a tutorial, by the way. But most KSP tutorials, right? To so basically do this, 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 
follow that, do this, practice this. Meanwhile, on this channel, guys, just, just keep doing it and you'll do it with the power of friendship. And that's the great content I provide. Guys, remember to like the video. You can also join my Patreon by clicking the link in the description. And you can join my channel membership program. Get a badge next to your name and some emojis to spam in the comments. Um, there were probably better moments to segue to that, weren't there? <laughs> than, um, than me just uh, smack talking my channel. Um, what, 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 what are we doing right now? Let's look back at the screen. I was just in a... I was just... I just think I just blacked out for a second. But yes, the uh, the Ariane 5 has gone now. We got through the hardest part of this mission, which, as I said, was just getting the thing to actually, you know, get to space without flipping over. And and there's the space plane. It looks, uh, I'd say it looks pretty neat. I quite like the effect of the two front uh, cockpits, actually. I, I know I'm not the first person to blend the two cockpits together like that to make kind of one big custom one, but it, it does look pretty nice, doesn't it? And, uh... Uh, the rear docking adapter, I know I said it's like a, it's not a fuel tank or a piece of empty fuselage, but it is an actual airlock piece. There's no way of doing this in Kerbal Space Program, so, uh, in this video it is a fuel tank, but it's not got all of its fuel inside it. I did drain some of the fuel, and we're not going to use all of the fuel on board this thing anyway, so, even if there is a bit too much fuel than what there really should be, if I wanted the same capacity as the ESA space plane, uh, we don't actually use it, so we can just say that's the, uh, that's the payload mass. I use exactly the right amount of fuel that I plan to use, guys, basically, in this video. Once again, I'm shielding myself from criticism. That's why I said this last episode. That's why I love doing recreating craft that never existed, because you can't, you can't tell me I, I messed something up because it never, never happened. So there, that, that's, um... That's why I love doing these videos. And also because it's fun. And there is just something so cool about space planes. It's why I love building SSTOs. There's something so cool about, you know, you have one spacecraft that flies off and then just comes back in one piece and nothing is lost except the fuel, obviously. But in real life, I think space planes are so cool. Like the space shuttle, I know, had many negative aspects to it. But it was so cool just to see it return from space. And you can look at it and that's a vehicle that was like a big plane that went to space. It's so cool to me. Maybe I'm just a very simple person, but stuff like the um, the uh, the dr dream chase, yeah, the dream chase. That, that, that's that. Can you imagine that? Like a little space plane that just sits in space and it's like a re-entry. It'd be so cool. And um, I know capsules and I guess eventually, well, starships very cool. That's another thing entirely. But like the capsules, like Dragon, Starliner, Orion. Yes, they're more practical and sensible and make a lot more sense, but. Uh, space planes just look so much more cool, don't they? There's something much more sci-fi about them. I don't know what it is. Obviously, Starship is in a, a league of its own. That's like the actual future, isn't it? <laughs> um, but I guess it's the same sort of thing. Like, okay, it's not a space plane in the conventional sense, but it is still a futuristic rocket ship that comes back to Earth and lands and you can look at it. I don't know. Am I just like... Is this just the insane ramblings of an insane person, or am I making sense? Do you guys concur? What do you think? Let, leave a leave a comment below, and I'll um see if I'm a, alone in this or not. But that's kind of my answer when people say, "Which would you rather fly on, New Shepard or um, VSS Unity or you know, Spaceship Three, whenever that uh, starts flying?" And I do prefer Virgin Galactic's approach. Like, I would rather fly on the Virgin Galactic vehicle, a because it's a longer flight, not just like for the space flight, obviously, but the actual flight itself. Like, you you leave on the runway and you fly up inside the spacecraft attached to the carrier craft, which would be a pretty fun experience. And it's a, it's a nice plane. Have you seen the interior? I'm sure everyone here at this point is quite familiar with it. It's a really nice plane. Like, it just adds to the experience. New Shepard's cool, I guess, because it's a rocket. You get to fly, you, you get to say you flew in a rocket when VSS Unity it's a rocket plane, but it's not, you know, you know what I mean, right? It doesn't doesn't look and fly like a rocket does. So they, both programs have kind of their pros and cons, but I think out of the two, I do prefer Virgin Galactic. But I would happily fly on either, to be honest. Like, I would love to go to space one day. I would probably vomit. So I, I'd probably not be a good candidate for it, but I'm just saying. Uh, Rich, Rich, or Jeff, Jeffrey and Rich. I know you guys are big fans of my channel. Um, Jeff, I, I've bought some stuff at your shop before, so if you want to hook me up with a ticket, that'll be that'll be pretty sweet. I can give you a shout out. I can give you a shout out in space this week, or a Kerbal Space Program video, or both. Happy to, technically, I've given you a shout out now, so really, you guys now kind of owe me. So really, this is just the right thing, I think. And here I am, by the way. I did make a quick, quick save. Just I wanted to test the uh, 
the abort module here because it's got no SAS units on board. We can just use the gimbal of the engines, but I wanted to make sure it had enough delta V to deorbit itself. I know that it does because it's too, it's got over 200 meters per second of delta V, but I just wanted to just wanted to make sure. And I guess you guys would probably want to see it just in action. And there it is. There, Mince coming there. He's um he there he goes. <laughs> uh, we'll just crossfade back in time now to where before I um did that when I made the quick save and uh, get to getting the space plane back to Earth or I guess back to Kerbin in this sense but I don't know why I needed to clarify that. I got quite lucky actually in this well I wouldn't say lucky like I've, I've just done so many runway landings at this point that it's quite second nature to me but I got quite lucky I did I managed to get it in one go I didn't have to make any quick saves or anything like that. We're gonna land this back at the runway we're gonna have to glide it as well because I don't have any engines on the space plane itself with the only engines are on that bit that's going to get detached at the back the airlock piece so we're gonna have to try and glide this thing back to the Kerbal Space Center's runway and that that's it actually that's it we just have to glide this back to the Kerbal Space Center's runway you might have noticed that rather frustratingly the Ariane 5 core stage is still in orbit even though I detached it I think, before I reached a stable orbit. I'm almost certain I detached it before reaching a stable orbit. Though I'm aware that sometimes if you do that and then you like, the game doesn't quite deorbit it properly and then it just stays in orbit. Like, you guys are probably aware that on Laon Aerospace, I always make a point to uh, never leave debris in orbit. I always make sure debris and stuff is always put on a suborbital trajectory so that it decays. But if you actually, if I actually went to the tracking station in Laon Aerospace and turned on debris so I could see all the debris, there's tons. And I think the game just wants a part, a part leaves physics range, but before it's entered the atmosphere or been destroyed or something, then it will just pop it into an orbit. It won't actually terminate the piece, um, which is kind of frustrating when it comes to trying to avoid Kessler syndrome. I know it's not a big deal because it doesn't really matter like the space dolphins aren't actually real guys i'm really sorry to break it to you but just from like a perfectionist standpoint it is kind of frustrating to know that despite me going to efforts to make sure there is no debris left in space there is always just loads of debris left in space uh, but not the space plane that is very much not in space as you can see uh, we are rapidly approaching the runway i had to do quite quite a sharp drop down as i realized we were probably on a course to overshoot so i had to make an an unrealistically sharp drop down in order to make sure we actually reached the runway and didn't overshoot. So Valentina had to endure quite a lot of G-Force just there. But luckily Valentina, she got quite a high tolerance for G-Force. So it was all okay in the end. And here is our touchdown approaching. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the mission. I do hope you enjoyed it. And I do hope you enjoyed episode one of this mini-series as well. It's certainly been a fun little journey recreating the Columbus program and indeed the Hermes shuttle. My original plan was just to build the Hermes shuttle actually but whilst I was going down the research rabbit hole of the vehicle I just came across the actual plan for the Columbus and I thought well, let's just make it a little a little mini series. So there we are that's it all wrapped up. There are my patrons scrolling on screen. You can join their magnificent ranks by clicking the on-screen button or description link. You can also join my channel's membership program by clicking the join button below the video and get some cool emoji spam in the comments as well as a cool little badge next to your name. There's some videos on screen that might pique your interest from my channel and if you liked the video then feel free to hit the like button as well. That's it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.